Hello, uh, my name is Margarita Kuleva and uh, we continue our uh, series of very experimental uh, lectures which is called The Arrival and this is lecture two which is called The, the Ship and um, well, hello, welcome from the UK and uh, yes, we have arrived a couple of days ago and uh, if you didn't see our lecture uh, on uh, the border which was filmed actually uh, in the process of crossing the border, the, the English Channel or La Manche, please do that, so you can see uh, the link, hopefully, um, uh, at the border uh, at the moment. So uh, in today's lecture, I want to shift the attention from uh, social institution of, of border as place of uh, um, well, meaning making and meaning breaking uh, at the same time to uh, a meaning, cultural meanings of vehicles. And um, uh, what we try to do is to kind of uh, take an interdisciplinary, uh, deconstructivist um, uh, approach on the um, uh, ship uh, as an agent. Uh, of, of travel, the participants of uh, travel, and, and I would just uh, say a few words about where we are. That's um, uh, an air uh, force um, uh, hangar for aircraft from uh, uh, time of the Second World War, which is now uh, quite a peaceful uh, place for um, Malaysia, for just, just, just ordinary hobby uh, of um, uh, aviation, and um, um, probably you can be uh, uh, interested in, in, in my costume today. So that's that's a Soviet uh, parachute, uh, which now turned to a kind of a very feminine 19th century uh, dress, and uh, that was made by my mom. So. Uh, well, hi, mom, and uh, uh, I, I would say so for uh, the design. So, design is something of redesign, recycling meanings. That's something uh, we do today while speaking about uh, ships. Because uh, if we if we speak on technical uh, features of, of uh, different kinds of uh, ships, if we if we take it. Uh, like just just technically, just very pragmatically, uh, uh, you probably know that uh, the uh, in terms of uh, velocity, uh, modern uh, trains they are not they didn't run they didn't go too far from the speed of uh, Victorian trains. Some of them uh, they could be as fast as 120 kilometers. Um, oh, probably less miles than that um, um, an hour. But if we compare cultural meanings of, of trains now and uh, trains in Victorian era, uh, so uh, you, you can probably spot uh, a lot of difference here. And uh, my uh, uh, today's experience from the morning because we are in very um, uh, West London and uh, we had to take a train from Pennington to get here. So I had a very peculiar experience this morning with this uh, kind of um, uh, Victorian, uh, in terms of how long it is, uh, Victorian uh, dress and it's just impossible to, to make it normally, to make it uh, uh, every day with this kind. So I, I was kind of an interesting uh, subject uh, on the uh, train um, um, uh, this morning. So uh, the point is that the, tec the technical characteristics of ship may be that they, they are not too dissimilar with early times, but the whole experience of, of, of travel um, uh, is, is different. So uh, as I said before, we want to play in this lecture, we want to take a closer look at vehicles um, uh, themselves uh, and uh, reevaluate re them, uh, put them uh, in, in more uh, attention, um, not a just means of transportation, not that pragmatically, but uh, as, as, as participants, hello, <laughs> as participants uh, of, of, of uh, any, any kind of travel. So uh, when we speak um, about uh, 
ships uh, and, and Russian travel, as I said, it would be an interdisciplinary lecture. So I would uh, take a closer look um, at uh, uh, details on international travel in, in Russia in 19th century. Uh, so um, uh, a recent uh, paper of uh, uh, philologists uh, from uh, Tomsk University shown very interestingly that um, when uh, international travelers from Germany and Poland uh, came to Russian Empire uh, of that time, they put a lot of attention to um, uh, different meaning of uh, transportation, different worlds. They didn't uh, divorce themselves. They didn't uh, exist in, in their uh, mother tongues uh, as words as britschka or tilega. So because of this kind of Russian travel, it came to vocabulary of, of travelers first and then to uh, German and, and Polish um, uh, language. So that already creates a kind of a framework um, of, of cultural specificity of travel. So probably one of the first things we should mention when we concern uh, well, cultural travel and, and uh, um, uh, and, and, and Russia, they are um, uh, limits. So uh, now those uh, Russian citizens, not only Russian, but uh, especially Russian citizens um, uh, who watch this lecture would probably agree with me on uh, complaining of um, uh, strict and strict restrictions for um, traveling abroad. And this concerns not only UK, not only uh, Europe, but even the, the most popular, according to statistics, the most popular destination for Russian citizens, uh, uh, which is Turkey. So it's getting harder and harder uh, to uh, get somewhere um, abroad. And well, for instance, recent statistics from 2000, not that recent, but the, the latest we could find uh, from 2016-17 show us that uh, only so that that, that only uh, one third of Russian citizens actually have uh, international passports in their possession. That means that only one third of Russian citizens can travel. Uh, potentially, it doesn't mean that they do that. Uh, so probably it's even less of uh, uh, Russian travels. And uh, more recent statistics of uh, uh, last year show that that only uh, well less than. Uh, uh, hundred thousands of Russians could go to um, the UK, uh, for instance, that, which is not um, obviously much. But uh, these limits are not that new things for, for um, Russian culture of travel. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, a lot of Russians uh, faced some uh, restrictions in 19th century and one of the iconic examples we put uh, in the blurb of our project is uh, Alexander Pushkin, uh, world famous and uh, basically an icon of, of, of um, uh, Russian literature and culture who had uh, never been abroad, which is a kind of a uh, painful uh, debate for Russian cultural uh, specialists who often mention uh, the fact that uh, Pushkin participated in one of uh, campaigns in um, uh, a Russian Turkish war uh, and uh, in uh, 1829, uh, he was part of Russian army um, occupying some territories of, of Turkey. So some would say that Pushkin actually was abroad uh, in Turkey, but others would argue that uh, Pushkin was still in, in Russian Empire because uh, the uh, city was already occupied uh, by the army. But that's quite interesting that uh, this, uh, not that kind of important for understanding Pushkin fact, um, uh, uh, gets so, so much um, attention. I think this attention is closely connected to, to understand uh, uh, closely connected with understanding of, of Russian culture as a global uh, phenomenon. So uh, if you look back at history, we would say that uh, obviously there were a lot of uh, restrictions, not ev everyone could 
uh, get uh, abroad. Uh, I think in, in, in many countries of uh, Europe, uh, the situation uh, was um, similar, but that was crucial for um, well Russian um, uh, intelligence. Uh, uh, of course, we should mention restrictions uh, connected to um, uh, Soviet Union, especially the period of um, Cold War and Iron Curtain, then the crisis of um, uh, the financial crisis of uh, the 90s after the collapse of uh, Soviet Union when the borders were more than more open but uh, again because of financial restrictions not everyone uh, uh, could travel so uh, possibly limitness uh, of uh, Russian travel is one of the features but not the main one um, uh, for me but it, it frames a kind of a, a context uh, so um, I want to move back and uh, rather uh, re-evaluate the idea of, of travel and ships when it concerns um, Russian culture. And what I would bring here is figure of uh, space prophet um, uh, Konstantin Tselkovsky, one of the pioneering scientists and intellectuals uh, who dealt with this uh, uh, space uh, um, uh, discoveries. So uh, Tselkovsky was um, a great follower of uh, uh, Fyodorov's uh, movement. Uh, he was one um, of uh, 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 major um, uh, inventors uh, of, of vehicles concerning space in the first uh, part, uh, first half of uh, uh, 20th century. We could mention. Uh, he's very interesting project um, uh, on um, a space train. We can mention uh, a lot of his fantastically interesting uh, drawings where people just um, uh, float in space with uh, little wings. But together with this biographically, uh, Selkovsky was um, a teacher in a um, uh, provincial uh, gymnasium. Uh, he spent some years in Moscow, but uh, he, has, he had never been abroad. And actually, like my feeling, like he showed not too much of interest for traveling abroad. So rather than uh, going horizontally, than exploring land horizontally, he decided on, on vertical uh, possibilities of, of travel uh, and, and reimagine the, 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 the travel uh, itself. And uh, if we continue on this line with rapid growth of space industry in Soviet Union, and at the, si uh, at the same time, the, the fact the borders were closed, the fact of uh, uh, quite restricting uh, realms of uh, Iron Curtain, we could just contrast these different dimensions of travel which are um, uh, quite well represented um, in, in, in culture uh, as well. And uh, what comes to mind uh, is um, quite uh, important work of uh, um, Ilya Kabakov from uh, 1985. Uh, that's something he would call a total uh, installation, uh, which is called uh, Man Who Flew Out uh, his communal apartment directly uh, to space without passing uh, any borders and uh, uh, so this installation was, uh, was showed uh, in um, Tate uh, a couple of uh, years ago as part of um, uh, large uh, Ilya and Emilia Kabakov um, uh, show that uh, been also in Moscow and um, in, in Hermitage uh, the Hermitage in, in, in St. Petersburg. Uh, so, um, uh, so we could see the like a quite an ordinary uh, decoration of a criminal apartment of uh, a person who's not well off, but who was smart enough and inventive enough to just uh, fly fly away uh, somewhere vertically without without any any uh, kind of necessarily. Uh, documents and uh, if we go further with these fantasies we uh, uh, could possibly mention um, uh, quite a famous movie called 
uh, a window to, to Paris, uh, a Knopf Paris uh, from um, um, uh, uh, perestroika years and uh, the main plot is uh, um, uh, a middle-aged person who is not too well off as well, who lives in Pittsburgh uh, in a communal apartment. He discovers a secret um, uh, path, like a hidden path to directly uh, to, to Paris. So he starts exploring uh, this hidden uh, kind of um, uh, opportunities which gives us more perspectives on alternative ways of travel. Um, and um, uh, the, the concluding part of this um, short lecture for, for, for planes and for this airport uh, will be connected to directly to vehicles, to, to, to ships, and um, um, uh, um, I would stop to, to have a detailed look uh, on um, ideas of uh, Russia as a ship, uh, because um, uh, probably you might remember uh, a kind of important movie of um, Alexander Sekulov, like probably their movie, one of the most famous movie of uh, this um, Russian film director from 2002, uh, which was specially prepared for 300 years of uh, St. Petersburg, and it was filmed in the Hermitage for, for uh, uh, rediscovering uh, St. Petersburg um, identities of that time. That was a very important movie because kind of it uh, reassembles the city, recenters the city around the Hermitage um, as a cultural uh, dominant again. So uh, very innovatively this beautiful movie um, uh, was made with just um, one take so uh, it's just like one one hour uh, and a half uh, something uh, uh, like that um, uh, which was kind of a miracle of um, uh, uh, camera work and uh, of course the, the the director's work of Sakurov is very interesting so um, uh, uh, Russian arc tells us the story of uh, the Hermitage and uh, two travelers uh, not too much in, in space because uh, it was filmed uh, only in the Hermitage but uh, more than time so it shows Russian history for the last uh, two centuries uh, starting with um, Romanov uh, in, in the beginning of uh, 19th century and uh, concluding with, well, continuing with uh, Nicholas II, the revolution, and then the siege of um, um, Leningrad, which is very important, dramatic um, history of St. Petersburg, which is also um, a city where I was born. So um, um, there are two travelers, Sakurov, Sakurov kind of um, I, well, iconic for, for that time, uh, especially Russian intellectuals, and um, uh, a French traveler uh, from uh, 19th century who is not, who in the beginning of the movie doesn't show too much of uh, respect to, to Russian culture by stating it was kind of uh, secondary in comparison to, to uh, uh, Western culture. So they develop uh, the dialogue and uh, it feels like uh, they, they could find a, a point of uh, um, a, a agreement, but that is quite interesting that we, we imagine um, like Russian culture as a ship or Russia itself um, as a ship. Um, um, that's quite interesting that the, the example of this uh, arc that is to save uh, Russian culture from uh, all the uh, threats and, and dangers uh, is actually a collection of uh, uh, West European art. Uh, the Hermitage uh, mostly uh, has got in, in its um, uh, uh, possession. We could also uh, uh, connect it with some issues of uh, well cultural uh, colonialism and um, uh, the past of um, um, Russian uh, Empire, but it's quite interesting that uh, it's not by uh, Sakurov only. It's not Sakurov only who emed, so who continues with this uh, metaphor of of uh, the ark or, or, or the ship, but uh, uh, some. Um, 
uh, younger generation of uh, creative uh, producers from Russia. And um, uh, I would uh, uh, point at um, a recent song by uh, a very talented uh, um, uh, young Russian performer whose name is uh, Manetichka, who finds herself in direct dialogue with Sekurov and uh, her song um, Russian Ark, uh, which was released a couple of years um, ago. And, um, um, uh, well, I would thank um, Alexander Utu, one of our project participants, for his translation from um, Russian version of, of the song. So that's a quotation. A, a broken ark rises from the bottom, and we are to live forever, and we are to float forever, to seek happiness where even icons of ugly five-floor uh, residential housing cry. Um, and uh, more from Manetichka. We've been floating for so long, we forgot where we are from and where we're going, what dock we came from, and what the ending price. Change, change, drag us back to the bottom into octopus fisher, fisher nets, nets to a poacher's den. Uh, there are a lot of us and few of them. Where's their apple feast? Where's their oil? Where's their gas? Um, sorry, uh, where's their gas? Uh, they, they have their unisex, but we've got their class iconos that is, and uh, Mikhail of Sass, who is kind of doubtful in taste, um, uh, but interesting uh, Russian pop singer. So what um, uh, Magnetichka does, she continues this, this metaphor of uh, not just special way of Russia, but a uh, very special um, of, of, of Russian um, uh, travel uh, pl to place Russia uh, 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 somewhere uh, in, in, in space um, um, as a sheep, but she is definitely more uh, inclusive because it's not just, uh, well, high art, would be Russian art or European art, but also pop songs, panel housing from Khrushchev and uh, Brezhnev era, and um, uh, well, she's very particular on uh, contemporary um, Russian um, designs. Um, as well. So I think with this metaphor, I would uh, leave you for now, but you're most welcome to our concluding final event, which will be uh, Russian Bowl, and there will, there will be definitely more uh, on um, uh, Russian travel and presence on Russian culture or in different dimensions, and there will be not just, just me, but also in very special invited uh, panelists who will, de who will deliver uh, more talks on, on uh, specificity of Russian travel. That would be all for today. Thank you.